Welcome to Garden Plants with Jim Putnam. Let's talk spider's web fascia. This is Fatsia japonica spider's web. Uh, this is one of our absolute favorite plants here in the garden in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're in zone 7B, and I'll, I'll tell you why that's relevant uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, just like other Fatsia japonica, this is an evergreen, and it has these you know, kind of giant palmate leaves on them. Uh, really, really beautiful foliage on all Fatsia, really. The thing that makes this one such a great plant is the variegation, the, the, the striping and the speckling and the spotting with white variegation. And you'll see it earlier in the season, uh, much more pronounced. So the new growth in the spring is much more pronounced. As the season goes on, the variegation in it's a little more muted. And as we can see right here, we're filming this in November. Uh, it's you know very muted at this point, but still quite beautiful and quite striking. And you can see some of the newer uh, variegation down here below this. And then of course, as you can see, these almost alien-like flowers uh, on top of this thing. This is one of the most amazing pollinator plants because it's blooming at a time when other things are not. This will reach four to five feet in height, maybe three, four feet in width uh, over time. It can be kept smaller than that. Probably if you never pruned it, it could get a little taller than that. Sometime about mid-fall, you'll see these flower spikes start to form on Fatsia and they almost look alien. It's just these round clusters of white flowers that the pollinators absolutely love. Right now, I've got some sort of small non-stinging wasp that I can't identify. There are ants on it pollinating. I've seen flies on it. I've seen bees on it. You know, while, while leading up to shooting this video, it seems like almost everything that's out and about and is in need of a uh, uh, is in need of something is landing on these flowers and so it's the perfect time of year for that. But Fatsia is somewhat tricky here in zone 7. I think m most of us would say they're very hardy in zone 8 to 10 uh, but here in zone 7, uh, especially 7a, we have to we, we tuck them up against we'll tuck it up against the house here. I don't want any winter wind on it. This is a plant that if I was going to go around, if I had something that was just abnormally cold, like our average low temperature is probably somewhere around 10. If we had something, this one's been in the ground about 24 months. If we had something coming below that, this might be one that I would protect in zone 7. But I've never had an issue. I've never had an issue as long as I kept them out of the wind, put them in a place with slightly well-drained soil. I don't think it will be an issue for you. Spider's web fatsia and really any fatsia japonica, these are part shade or shade plants. And that's a lot of times true with things with big giant tropical looking leaves like this. Uh, you can you know, kind of identify that thing probably doesn't want to be out in the full sun. Uh, it's trying to collect, you know, it has this oversized leaf to collect um, light that's kind of bouncing around a forest. It, you know, it's kind of where how, probably how this evolved. Uh, where would you gonna, we're gonna use this beautiful plant. I mean, look how, look how striking, you know, the foliage is on this thing. Uh, we've got it just as an accent plant here on the corner of the foundation, you know, just as a specimen, a single specimen by itself. It could be mass planted, but I've never seen two of these spider's web fats here look the same. Uh, you know, they're all, the, 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 the variegation is different, the growth habit sometimes different. Um, you know, they're just interesting by themselves, in, in my opinion. This will work as a container plant, but definitely not in zone seven, probably not even like 8A, but if you were in nine or 10, that would be fine. And if you just, almost checked out of this video because you found out you couldn't grow it, uh, you can. Uh, you can use this as a house plant. And if, as long as you have, in the house, you'd want as much light on it as you could possibly get. You know, the brightest window you could find. And outside, we want to protect it from direct sun. But uh, anybody can use this as a house plant or outside. And again, I think it looks best. It's just a single specimen. So we have a dwarf camellia next to it. This is shorter than the camellia right now. It'll eventually be taller then the camellia and it'll be in flower you know, in November and it'll be quite showy up here against the blue on the house as well. Spider's web fatsia would also work great in a mixed border or a, if you needed a low screen in a part shade or shaded space, just being careful again if you're in zone seven or maybe eight A that it's not out in the open wind where you know, in the winter time it's going to, uh, you know, th that dry winter winds can definitely cause this plant, can wreak havoc on this plant. Uh, these are adaptable to uh, alkaline soils to acid soils to most soil types. Uh, they're not that picky really. Uh, pretty, pretty easy low maintenance plants. It likes moist well-drained soil and so this corner space here happens to be a spot that 
you know, actually holds a little more water between rains and watering. It's not wet, but it tends to be slightly more damp uh, over a longer period of time. And I mounted this up when I planted it and it's been perfectly happy over here. They like to say, you know, keep some moisture. Now I'm not telling you to put it in a wet area. You know, it needs to be, it does need to dry out uh, between rains and watering some, but a moist area isn't that big of a deal. These will, these will become very drought tolerant um, and they're good at letting you know once they're very established. We've seen a couple of them over here on NC State's campus that are up on raised walls and things where they're quite mature and I don't think they're getting any additional watering. Uh, here's a bee that's come to visit. Uh, at that time. So again, adaptable to soil types. Uh, don't put it in an area that's going to hold water, but they're not, you know, some moisture is okay. That's what I'll say. There's almost always a pollinator on here to uh, watch, uh, enjoy these uh, alien-like flowers. Uh, these are very humidity tolerant. Uh, Maintenance-wise, uh, I fertilize everything in this landscape, a shrub or a tree in late winter, early spring with an organic fertilizer once a year and that's it. That would definitely be important on something like Fatsia. I don't want to fertilize this in the summer or late summer or early fall because this is a plant that would be very vulnerable to putting on new growth uh, right at a time when it's about to get uh, smashed. I think that if you're in zone seven or eight, uh, I would spring plant this plant. I, don't follow, I didn't follow my own advice on this, and I planted this in like October or November uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, it, did it did struggle. That first winter, it, 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 it definitely got knocked back quite a bit, and it's taken a long time for it to recover. It's finally growing, and it's putting on some growth pretty quickly now. These are slow to start and then quicker in time on their growth. Uh, pruning, you can prune this anytime after the worst of the winter is passed, and you won't have to do a lot of pruning on it, but I think sometime in the future, the fatsy tend to get little crazy limbs here and there, and you can take those all the way back to the ground if you want to, not a problem, or you can individually lower them all uh, at one time, and that would happen again in the spring into early summer. That's about as late as I would do it. These flowers occur on new growth from that season, so you'll still get flowers, or they occur on last year's growth, uh, even if you don't prune it. So you get, you get, you'll get flowers regardless, as long as you're getting it done by early June, you'll still get flowers that season. We keep the area mulched, you know, around it. And again, it's got pretty even moisture over here. It's not wet, it's not dry, kind of the perfect spot. So this is spider's web fatsia. This is from the Southern Living Plant Collection. It's one of our absolute favorite plants in our landscape. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.